Hi, I'm George Taylor. I'm a principal scientist with the Design and Web Group here at Adobe, and I'm here to introduce the HTML5 compatibility pack for Dreamweaver. This is an extension to Dreamweaver that we're making available on Adobe Labs uh, for folks to download and start playing with. Um, I'm going to start by showing you some support that we've added for CSS3 media queries. Uh, media queries are a really useful tool for doing multi-screen development. Um, so we're really excited about it, and we've decided to add some, some new features through the extension to make uh, work with media queries easier. So um, let me dig in and show you how it works here. I've got this site uh, for Citrus Cafe, and I've got, I've got a home page here that obviously is designed for the desktop, but I'd like to be able to have it make sure that it, it renders nicely on uh, devices like smartphones or tablets, now that a lot of browsing is being done through those devices. So I'm going to bring up the multi-screen preview. And what you're seeing here is that page loaded into uh, three different screen sizes. I've got a large screen size, medium, and small, basically representing desktop, tablet, and phone. And of course, what you're seeing is that that same page design is being loaded into those, into those three sizes, um, which is representative of what, what you'd get on those devices. Uh, a lot of times, the devices will scale so that uh, it'll shrink to fit the content in the screen. But ideally, um, you want a design that actually fits the size of the screen, because you don't want users having to zoom in and pan around to, to find the content. And so that's what media queries are good for. And let's go ahead and add some media queries now to this page. So I bring up the Add Media Queries dialog, and what this lets me do is uh, associate a specific CSS file with a specific uh, screen size range. And I've got the three different sizes represented here. So I'm going to have uh, Dreamweaver create a new CSS file for my phone screen size. Um, and I'm going to have it put it in my CSS folder. And I'm going to do the same for tablet. And for the desktop, I'm going to just use my existing CSS file, my main CSS file that uh, already looks good for, for the desktop design. So you'll notice what's happened here is that the uh, tablet screen and the phone screen have gone essentially blank. And that's because the new CSS files are being linked in for those screen sizes. And those CSS files are empty. They don't have any rules in them yet. Um, so you're seeing just sort of a blank design there. If you look at the code, um, you'll also see that we've added the actual media query links here. So I've got now a phone.css and a tablet.css being linked in. Uh, but they're being linked in conditionally. If you look at the media attribute here, you can see that the phone CSS um, is only going to be brought in for that specific screen range. Uh, and same goes for tablet. For that screen size range, you'll get the tablet CSS. So the next step in the workflow here would really be to go ahead and close your multi-screen preview um, and actually start building out, developing your CSS for these different screen sizes. Um, and a handy way to work on that uh, is to actually go into uh, orient your workspace so that you're split vertically and you've got your code uh, sitting next to your next to Live View here. And you'll notice that Live View also honors the the media query uh, specifications. So that if I now actually bring this a little closer and I size that Live View down, it's now at the tablet size. So it's linking in that tablet.css, which, as I said before, is is empty right now. Um, but the next step in the workflow would be to switch to your tablet.css and start developing uh, the actual CSS for that screen size. Um, and you might do that by you know, borrowing some code from your main.css, pasting that in here, and basically starting to build out the desired design for that, for that screen size. I'm going to go ahead and skip ahead. I've already created CSS files for these other, um, for these other sizes. So let's go back to our code here. And I'm going to link in tablet2.css, which is something that I'd already worked on before, and bring that in. And you can see there's my tablet design. Um, now I've brought that CSS in. And I'll show you the same thing for the phone. If I size this down, you can see that it's now bringing in phone.css, um, which, is, which is empty. So let me bring in the one that I'd already worked on, phone2 and do the same thing and update. And you can see there's my uh, design for the, the phone. So if I bring up the multi-screen preview now, you can actually see all three designs at once uh, in the, in the multi-screen preview. Here's where you can really see your, your media queries uh, in action. And just a couple things to point out. So 
a reminder of what we're doing here. We're actually, we're, we're, it's the same page being loaded into the different screens. Um, but using CSS, we're adapting the layout and some pieces of the content to be more suitable for that screen size. So for example, in the tablet, this banner image is a little smaller than it is in the desktop version. And we're doing that through a CSS background image. Um, also notice that we've made some layout changes. In tablet, we've got the, the pod arrangement looking like this. Uh, whereas in desktop, we've got all three pods lined up across the, across the page. And of course, in the phone, we're going with just navigation. We've rearranged the menu so that it's a, a vertical uh, stack of, of menu options there. Um, the other nice thing that, um, about the multi-screen preview is just that while you're in here, you can actually navigate through your site and quickly check um, how your other pages are looking in different screen sizes. So I can click on a link say, go to the reservations page, and all three uh, viewports will update to show what that page looks like for that screen size. And again, here it looks fine for desktop, um, but for tablet and phone, I could definitely do some optimization there, and so I would go through those same steps for, for that page as well. So that's um, our support of CSS3 media queries through the multi-screen preview and the add media queries dialog. Now I want to jump in and show you some of the updates that we've made to code hinting and also show off some of the improved rendering that we have uh, in live view. Uh, as part of the HTML5 compatibility pack, um, we're, we're delivering an updated version of WebKit, which is the rendering engine that, that drives Dreamweaver's live view. So let me size the window so that it actually is using the, the tablet design. And now I'm going to switch to my tablet CSS. And let's say I want rounded corners on my menu items. Rounded corners is something that's really easy to do now with, with CSS3, a property called border radius. So let me find where I can add that in here. As I start to type border radius, you'll notice that we're getting a list of hints now. Um, and it's showing me all of the properties, all the CSS properties that include the term border radius in it. Now, because some of these CSS3 properties are not fully standard yet, a lot of the web uh, browsers are using prefixes uh, for, the, for their version of the property, the ones that they support. That's why you're seeing a dash WebKit border radius and a dash Moz for Mozilla border radius. Um, the nice thing about the um, improved code hinting here is that Dreamweaver will list all of those for you so that you can quickly see where they are and add them, uh, add them into your code. So I want, I'm going to start with the WebKit border radius. And I'm going to give it a border radius of 16 pixels. And update. And then if you look at Live View, you'll notice that all the menu items now have these rounded corners. Um, if I wanted this to work in Firefox, I would basically type border radius again, and then find the dash moz version of border radius, enter that, enter the same value. And if I wanted to future-proof my code for the day in the near future when these prefixes won't be needed, I'd go ahead and add just border radius and use the same value. So the code hinting really kind of helps you through this temporary stage that we're in right now where you have a lot of duplicate uh, CSS3 properties, um, and then also allows you to put in the official property for, for later use. Um, one more thing to show here with regards to uh, code hinting and what WebKit can do for you in terms of previewing. Uh, let's say that I wanted to add a little motion or animation to this design. So I've got a rule in here that I, that I had before that I've uncommented that makes it so that when I hover over um, one of these menu items, it shifts up. Now the way it's working now is it just sort of snaps up into, into position. What I'd like to be able to do is have it do more of a slow transition. So the way I can do that is using a new CSS3 property called transition. So I'll start to type that. And again, you'll see the code hinting kick in here. And I'm going to be adding the one for WebKit. I'm going to add a transition duration. And let's make it one second. Now by doing this, uh, when I mouse over these menu items, you'll see that it slowly moves up. And I've got kind of a nice effect, again, all done through these new CSS3 properties, uh, something that before took a lot of work with JavaScript. Um, and with rounded corners, took a lot of work in terms of slicing up images. Um, you can now do very easily with, with CSS3. And then Dreamweaver's code hinting here really kind of helps you locate, you know, find the right properties and make sure that you've got all, all the different browsers covered. 
So that's a quick highlight of, of some of the features in uh, the compatibility pack. Like I said, it's available on Labs uh, now, and we encourage folks to go download it and try it out. Thanks.